what's up everybody so today here we go I'm gonna do I was planning to grind my character basically but I also want to do just a bit of information for you guys that are a bit new to Elder Scrolls essentially so we're in this little grindy zone here to uh, explore a bit of the game and main things I'm gonna mention is some few things about changing your mount appearance in Elder Scrolls also like mount upgrade visuals and type stuff like that how do you kind of go about doing that also some features in the settings that you might not be aware of so hiding your helmet for example is another one that uh, I've shown someone to do it and they had no idea it was possible so I just wanted to go over these few things and the main point I wanted to go over actually was the auction house in Elder Scrolls Online so where is the auction house what is it and it's a little bit interesting so we'll get to those things in this video and right now I'm just gonna grind a bit with my character and kind of talk about those points with you guys so first things first is the how to change about appearance in Elder Scrolls Online and it's a very simple task of going to the settings menu no that's not what it is it's not that simple guys so what happens is this is more challenging than I thought because I can't speak very well while I'm, while I'm fighting stuff. Okay, so what happens with your mount is it starts at level 1. It's, it's not really a level per se, it's more of a skill. So it starts off at skill of nothing. And it's like the base speed, base capacity that it has. So it increases your bag slots, so your actual bags like in here. This is what it increases, not like a separate pouch on your mount. It's not like weird like that or anything. And pretty much what happens is you have three different skill sets to put your mount points into and you go to the stable master to upgrade them and all you have to do is pay like 250 gold and the reset cooldown time is 20 hours so you can do it once a day. And once you do that you'll start getting towards the ability for your mount appearance change essentially and how that happens is you've got to get to the skill 20 skill level of 20 in one of the three and each different skill tree gives you a different appearance to your mount so I'm just gonna get the base mount out here for you guys a second this is gonna be very interesting I know oh yes I know so you'll probably start off with this brown horse this these chains don't don't show up so actually I'm gonna show you the next step is where to change all your different settings like hiding your helmet in Elder Scrolls and all this other junk so we go into settings, however you do that on console, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but into the settings we go, and then we click into gameplay, and here you actually have your mount options to hide your helmet, so this on right now, so my helmet is being hidden so I don't see the ugly thing, and then hide mount stamina upgrade, so these are all off and they're all not hidden right now, so this is, this is the thing, I'm on the wrong character, I will, I'll, I will, I'll show you my other character, but essentially you've got a stamina upgrade. All right, so your mount will look like this when you first get it. Horse, very plain, nothing on it. Your speed upgrade will give you the chains that you just saw. And then on my other character here that we see, this is the armor, sorry, the stamina one, which is actually armor for its face. And then you've also got the carrying capacity version, which gives you a couple of bags on the sides. So. That's kind of how mounts work in Elder Scrolls and how you can change his appearance if you're kind of tired of looking at your very, very plain horse. So that's kind of what you can progress towards. The next point is your helmet, which I just showed you in the gameplay menu. Hide helmet. Just turn that on or off. I'm dying. Oh no! Okay, so, and the last point is Elder Scrolls Auction House is not the type of auction house you would expect in other MMOs, so normally it's like one consolidated auction where all the players can list their stuff on there, and it's basically managed by the, the game server, so all your junk is on there, you can buy from whatever players you want, and that's kind of how it works in other MMOs but Elder Scrolls Online is a little bit different where the auction house 
in the game is guild traders instead. Now what does this mean? So the guild traders actually, they, they're run by the guilds themselves. So when you have a guild in Elder Scrolls, for example, I've got this, this guild here, wherever it's gone. Not that I can ever find it. Guilds, there it is. Yes, okay. So I've got a guild here. There's seven people online. You can create a guild if you want to. So there's a little bit of a written guide there for you guys <laughs> in the game itself. And essentially what happens is when you make a guild, you can actually bid on guild traders throughout the game. And they're all located in main towns, along the road sometimes, with their little caravan tent. And when you bid on these traders, you have a chance to actually own that trader for your guild. And the items listed at that trader will show up to everyone who visits that particular trader. So rather than a consolidated auction where all the players can list all their stuff on one one auction house so you can kind of find the things that you're looking for, you have to go to visit different shops that are run by guilds to find the stuff you're looking for. So they'll have different prices, obviously they'll compete on the prices, it'll kind of even itself out some more rural more rural vendors won't have as many choices, so you might have to go to ones that are in a bigger city, that kind of thing. It's a little bit frustrating, to be honest, sometimes, the way that Elder Scrolls Online has set up the auction, and it would make a whole lot more sense if they just did the consolidated way, but I kind of get it as well. It's more of a realistic perspective on trading, if you think about it, because it's not gonna be like you've got the one auction house for the whole entire world. It doesn't. It doesn't really work that way in real life. So I see where they've came, where they've come from on that one, but it is a little bit frustrating because the search is not ideal either for guild traders. I know I was supposed to be fighting this whole time, but I totally got off track. The search box for guild traders is less than ideal. It's not very helpful. And okay, <laughs> and you can't actually type in anything into the search search box. It's literally just you've got to find the first category that you want to look into, then find the subcategory of that category, and then kind of guess where the item you're looking for is. And usually it's straightforward, like crafting materials. Fine, I can deal with that. Armor, pretty much solid there. If you're looking for weird bits and bobs and you're not entirely sure what category it's in, it might be a little bit frustrating for you. So that's kind of how guild traders work in Elder Scrolls. How to hide your helmet and also how to change your mount's appearance. If you are wondering how to make this thing look cooler. I mean, it's, it's already as cool as it can get. Oh, and the last fact, by the way. The last fact you need to know as a new player in Elder Scrolls, I know this is a very short video, it's not going to go over too much today, but the last fact you should definitely know is that all Khajiit are lying skooma dealers and you shouldn't trust them. I'm joking. So <laughs> don't be racist towards Khajiit guys, I have, this game is very racist so if you don't like haters you might not want to play. And, um, or just don't play because you- oops, I killed a white rat. My bad rat, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. And I actually did forget one thing. Just one thing. There's probably a lot more, but check out my basic training guide. It kind of goes over a lot of stuff. And this here is where to like find your mounts and any costumes you've bought and all that good stuff. It'll probably prompt you anyway to go here once you get your first mount. It'll tell you like your collections menu has been updated with your mounts. So all you have to do is then go to the collections menu and this area has a lot of different things that you might not have known about. You've got your appearance, so this is where all of your costumes are kept that you can equip and unequip whenever you want. You've also got furnishings, so if you got anything from your trophies they would go here. Assistance, if you bought one of them then you probably know where that is. Um, all your weird mementos you get from quests and stuff will be here as well for you to use. And then finally you've got your mounts. So this is where your mounts show up and you can select them as you please and these are all cross account mounts so once you get it once you never have to get it again and that's kind of cool same with everything else pretty much the appearance the furnishings the mementos like all of your characters will have them going forward 
combat pets as well. If you get a pet you like, you can use it on every character you want. So that's pretty awesome. The other tab in the collections menus. There's lots of menus within menus that may be a bit confusing. DLC. So this is where you can find all the different DLCs here that are available to you at once. So there's some weird dungeons here that we could do. Maybe I'll do it. Who knows? And then you've also got housing, which is what houses you actually have and what houses you haven't connect collected connected yep yeah, that's the one group this is where you can join dungeons as well so the group tab is where the dungeon finder is too and the alliance war so it's all kind of consolidated into one rather than like you've got party finder you've got a dungeon finder and then you've got like Battlegrounds or something. I'm speaking in World of Warcraft context right now, but that's kind of the three main ones there And it's, it's not quite like that. It's just group in general Covers everything so you got dungeon and you've got Alliance War Which is just the one for now and hopefully they will be adding in that new PvP in the Morrowind update Into this tab as well. So it's a group and activity finder which should really I guess it was too long for the for the heading there and then you've got friends obviously guilds is where i showed you earlier and if you're confused why your stuff's not shown there and you've got also the alliance war tab here so this is where you want to select what war you're in and to do that make sure you're selected on campaigns because then you won't be able to see them it'll st stick it onto overview i think if you don't have a campaign selected then this won't obviously be there because it won't show you any stats it, it'll just be nothing so you'll probably stick on the campaign straight away so it's not an issue mail is that's the mailbox so it's within your menu which is kind of convenient you don't have to go to a physical mailbox the only thing is if you want to transfer stuff between characters you've got to use the bank instead which is like in main cities and stuff so just go find a banker stick your junk in there and then go on your other character to take it out and then we've also got, what else have we got? Journals. So this is where your quests are, your lore library. So this is where all the books you've collected are listed as well. Your achievements are in here too. And you can kind of keep track of them, but you'll get prompted with them anyway. I don't really see a need to keep track of the achievements because you'll get like a gift from it sometimes. You get like a helmet or whatever. And then leaderboards is... Alliance war rankings, which is again, you kind of already got that and you can see like who's leading each um, Each uh, alliance here as well as trials We've got weekly Hell Ross city. This is all like leaderboards for the whole game So you don't have to go like online to go view your stats. You can just see them straight in here Champion points are a bit funky. You'll get to them when you hit level 50 and uh it just increases your character's ability by a percentage basis. And then obviously you've got skills, there's nothing hidden in there. And your character, there's nothing hidden in there. And your bags, so you do have different um, bags here. Currency. If you're wondering where some points have gone, your currency tab will show you. And also, these Telvar stones, by the way, in Imperial City, if you've got that expansion, you can deposit these into the bank in Imperial City which will save you a lot of grief because you do lose half the points every time you die and you will die a lot there just because of the PvP and yeah that's probably a smart thing to do which I didn't do either so this has been kind of like a weird mashup of stuff for you guys that are newer to Elder Scrolls um, yeah so I hope you found this helpful and if you're an existing Elder Scrolls player a lot of these tips are not going to be too useful for you unfortunately so I, I apologize if I took your time on my channel. I know you guys want Elder Scrolls videos and I'm, I'm working on it. I've just uh, had some interesting... Had some interesting times lately trying to get my stuff sorted out. It's just been very busy, but I am working on it. I'm gonna make a lot more content. A lot more relevant, cool content as well. So I'm planning to do... Get this, guys. The best and worst upcoming MMOs video very soon. So this weekend probably I will be getting that out to you guys. I'm committing to it now. There's no backing out of this. It's gonna happen. And yeah, so that that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about today. I wanted some kind of context for my video. And 
I'm trying to grind my character a little bit. So that's what I'm gonna do for you guys now. Is a montage. Puppy, what are you doing, puppy? Hope you guys found this helpful anyway. And stay tuned for more. Because there will be plenty more, as usual. Hope you guys are having a great day. And we will see you again next time. Goodbye.